So I am back with another uh, introduction video. This time I wanted to talk about climbing harnesses now that we're at the end of the climbing season here. And uh, I'm gonna not just talk about rock climbing harnesses, I'm also going to talk about mountaineering and big wall and uh, just uh, different uses for the harnesses uh, throughout the sport. And if you're interested in getting into ice climbing or uh, want a harness with a bit more features then uh, Hopefully this will give you some insight, uh, especially if you're looking to buying your first harness. So I'm gonna start off, I have five harnesses here. Uh, these, I guess, uh, these three are more of the all around variety or more of these two are all the all around variety. And then like a super light all around one. And these two are more specialized. So I'm gonna start right here. Um, these are kind of, these three are kind of my core main harnesses and I use them all for sort of different things um, starting with this one in the middle this harness is meant for specifically just rock climbing uh, and so it has every harness has you know different features uh, but just about every technical harness nowadays has a belay loop these things on the side they're gear loops come with uh, most harnesses come with four, but a lot of these harnesses actually have five, which I actually really appreciate because I mostly climb long routes and long rock routes. So I can, usually I stick the stuff back here that I only use while rappelling down or on the descent. And I can leave these gear loops open for actual gear that I need on the climb. And so this specific harness, um, I'll, it could be used for like a single pitch sport climbing harness. It's a good beginner style. Most of these harnesses don't have any leg loop adjustments, just sort of a piece of elastic that will stretch out and conform to your leg. And so it will only have one adjustment, which is this, which uh, nowadays the most common one is the two buckle design. Some people call them speed buckles, auto double backs, whatever you want to call them. That's generally the consensus. However, there are still some out there that are manual double backs, which I'll show you in a bit. Uh, but other than that, it's just a straightforward rock climbing harness. Also tends to be kind of the cheaper option out of all these harnesses, especially when you get into the more specialty ones, um, with the exception of a mountaineering harness, which is actually probably the cheapest type of harness on the market, but you can't use that for rock climbing. All right, going over here, this harness is kind of just like the Ferrari version of that one. It's a bit smaller, packs down a bit more. I haven't actually weighed them, but I guess this thing would probably be a little bit lighter than this one. And this one's also a bit more versatile. So this is made for uh, everything from rock climbing. You can do it for single pitch rock climbing all the way up to alpine ice mixed climbing um, and any sort of big adventures in between. It does have a few more features than our standard sport climbing harness. Uh, coming in it has the same belay loop but you'll see that this belay loop is smaller profile than that so it helps again decrease the weight of the harness of anything as far as buckles go it has the auto double back waist loop buckle but also the leg loops have two buckles on there as well so that way you can adjust the leg loops if you are wearing more layers underneath your harness like you would in an alpine or ice climbing setting so that's a nice feature there as well as the harness itself it has the same amount of gear loops where it's uh, the same four gear loops two on each side and also one extra in the back but also it has these things called ice clipper slots and this particular harness happens to have four some harnesses only have two but uh, you know the more the merrier and uh, these just allow you to clip ice screws onto your harness and take them off while you're, for example, climbing a vertical waterfall and you only have one hand to spare. So that's like the big difference between most alpine harnesses and sport harnesses is that extra feature of the ice clipper slot. And so I tend to use this harness on my longer days, maybe with a longer approach and I wanna go more lightweight as well as if I'm doing ice climbing or anything that involves needing uh, ice clippers, then I'll pull this harness out as opposed to my rock climbing harness. Now this harness is a new buy. I got this this year at the start of mountaineering season because I wanted 
a blend of a mountaineering harness in terms of how much it packs down and I guess the lightweightness. But I also wanted full array of gear loops. And this harness kind of worked out for me, actually. Um, it came in onto the market just at the right time. But uh, what this harness has is um, four gear loops on each side and then two ice clipper slots right there. You can see it. And so um, I use this for my general mountaineering, but I can also use this as a technical climbing harness, which I have. I've been experimenting with it a little bit on... I took it up a couple of smaller rock climbs, multi-pitch rock climbs, and it performed decently well. Obviously with being thinner, it doesn't quite have the padding that um, I want with some of these harnesses, the more bulked ones. You can see this harness is also fairly new, but it has a decent, a uh, lot more padding than this harness. This is kind of more jockstrap style. And even this harness, even though the padding's kind of beaten down, you can actually see that they put some padding on the waist loop and the leg loops, same here, in order to increase your comfort while you're sitting on the rope. This has no comfort, and that's again because mainly you're using it for um, climbing where you're not expecting that you're gonna fall, like I alpine climbing or ice climbing or uh, fast and light mountaineering missions. Mountaineering, you never really expect to sit in your harness, as well as when you are doing that stuff, you generally have more layers on than just like a t-shirt. And so the layers will add the padding for you and the harness just has to hold you to the wall. I, I prefer all my harnesses to have belay loops. And so obviously this one being a technical harness has a belay loop. Uh, some mountaineering harnesses don't have belay loops, but they do make other more mountaineering specific harnesses with belay loops. And I personally prefer that. You can also see there's no leg loop adjustment here. They wanted to make the lightest harness, so they shaved off any extra weight. And uh, another thing is, it is a bit more annoying with mountaineering boots to actually step into this, uh, the leg loops of this guy, but I'm willing to deal with that slight inconvenience for the full array of gear loops. But other than that, that pretty much covers all my, all the climbing that I do during the summer at least, uh, with my rock climbing, my technical alpine climbing and then my le less technical alpine climbing but that's pretty much the three harnesses that I'll go between and um, and uh, another thing I forgot to mention is these all five of these are black diamond harnesses but uh, just because it's that's what I have doesn't mean that's what you should have any company that makes harnesses Gravel, Camp, uh, Petzl, any, any other company that makes a harness usually will make these specific harnesses and always you have to do is a little bit of research on their website figure out the names um i'm not giving any names of these specific harnesses if you want i can if you leave a comment i can tell you the names but the more idea is just to get the feel for the different types of harnesses that are out there and um they're like how you can tell the difference between the two to get your specific uses and so um yeah, if you go onto any website, any harness company will have like a straightforward rock harness and a mountaineering harness at least. Um, this one is a bit more of a rarity. This is a big wall harness. And you can always tell big wall harnesses because they're huge. Um, I mean, just looking at the difference right here, big wall harnesses have tons of padding. And that, the idea is because you're gonna be spending a lot of time sitting in your harness and just living in it in general. It's nice to have some padding especially when you're doing very technical aid routes where you, you're pretty much staying in the harness the entire time. And so, because these things are meant to be aid climbed in, they do have a couple of extra features. Um, one is, a big difference is two belay loops. Now, Metolius harnesses do come, like all every single one of their harnesses have two belay loops, but it's not exactly common, usually it's just the one. And so they have the idea of two belay loops is you can have a daisy chain on each of these and then it helps keep things a bit more organized on your harness, which is actually really nice. Metolius makes another really great big wall harness and um, they obviously they have the same two belay loops. Uh, this harness is a bit of a throwback to single buckle styles and double backing. And so that just requires an extra step. But of course, if you're at the level where you would want a big wall harness, you should understand how to use a single buckle harness. And then a huge difference with these guys are the amount of belay loops you got. 
here you can see, oh here, I'll, I'll go to the other side. So there's three right there, stacked on top of each other. Another one right here, and then three right here. And then this harness also comes with this hammer holster, which I just kept with it. I don't really do a lot, or any, nailing routes, but it'll, uh, I don't know, it came with the harness free, so I'm going to keep it. But yeah, so you have seven belay loops, as well as a haul loop. Now these things are sort of going out of style with the more modern harnesses. This is actually a rated haul loop. Probably, most of them are rated to two or three kilonewtons. Um, a lot of modern harnesses have this for a haul loop. And you can even see, if I pull out a newer one, it has zero kilonewtons on it. So this haul loop is pretty much good for just like uh, hanging your shoes or your chalk bag on <laughs> the back of your harness. Now you could bring up a haul line with this. This one's pretty sturdy. It may not be rated to any kilodunes, but you could probably bring up a tag line with this. But this one's obviously not going anywhere with how uh, beefy that haul loop is. You can hang a decent amount of weight on this and it's, and it's rated up to at least two or three kilonewtons. So that's the big difference. And obviously with aid or big wall climbing, you have tons of gear with you. So it makes sense to have all these gear loops stacked up on top of each other, but you'd also have something like a chest harness to go with it on the even more intense aid routes which require usually a ton of hammering and not a lot of free stuff. So those guys are interesting. They're also the most expensive out of the harnesses due to the amount of materials going into them. Um, and so I think most big wall harnesses are going to run you like, man, maybe like a hundred to 150 bucks. Whereas modern harnesses like that are more around 60 or something. And then here is my last harness I'm going to talk about. This is a general mountaineering harness for a non-technical route. If you're going up the eastern side of Mount Baker or the eastern route on Mount Baker or any of the normally guided routes on Rainier, any non-technical mountain, then this is the harness for you. It's completely stripped down. It packs down as small as any harness right here. <clears throat> and, um, you know, about a little bit smaller than, if you make a fist, it's about a little bit smaller than that. And it actually packs better into your pack if you don't bring the little bag that comes with the harnesses. All these harnesses come with little bags. And they, um, they're nice bags. You can use them for holding something at your house, but I recommend not bringing those out with you because they're just an extra bag and they're kind of useless. But um, but they'll be great for holding, you know, your uh, wires or your phone cables at your house. But uh, you can see this harness, back to the harness, is totally stripped down. We have, I again, I like to have all my harnesses have a belay loop, so I actually have a belay loop on this. A uh, number of mountaineering harnesses, um, especially ones that you'll get usually from rentals from whatever company you're going with, um, don't have belay loops. So I prefer, I personally prefer it. You also see how this has two gear loops instead of four. And even at that, they're really crappy gear loops. I can make these out of like shoelaces. And um, as well as this one also has, it's kind of hard to see. There we go ice clipper slots it has two ice clipper slots so two gear loops two ice clipper slots on either side that's because when you are doing non-technical mountaineering you usually have one or two ice screws with you max and then obviously uh the gear loops are just to hold your crevasse rescue stuff because that's all you need you're not going to have cams or other ice screws with you and probably not have technical tools this harness is just meant to hold you to the rope if you fall in a crevasse and it does a great job at that. They uh, make them pretty accommodating to big shoes, so you don't really have to step into them or anything. You just wrap them around your waist, and uh, you don't have to do any sort of like, you don't have to trip yourself or fall over because you're trying to get into your harness. And um, they're also pretty cheap. I think they're probably around $30 mark or 40 or something. But obviously, because they have the least amount of materials put into them. And uh, again, this ha harness has pretty much no padding. So I would not recommend bringing this rock climbing or any technical climbing. Because it's just going to wear on your hips a bit more. But the idea is that your clothes add the padding. 
And the idea is also that you're not going to fall into this thing in the first place. All right, so that's just a quick overview. Different types of harnesses, everything from your, you know, your single pitch sport climbing. You've got your alpine set up. And then you go into like those who mountaineer and, and big wall climbing. And that's pretty much spanning the whole gamut of rock climbing at, or at climbing in general. Now, I'm not saying like this is all the harnesses that are out there. Again, go see other companies. And if you find one that works better for you, then feel free to buy it. But um, this, like having a nice selection of harnesses when you get into more forms of climbing isn't a bad idea because it helps you sort of perform to your best ability on the route that you're at. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave a comment. If you want to add any other types of climbing harnesses to the conversation, you can comment on that. Then I'll see you guys in the next video.